Welcome back to the Black and Gold Report. We're now joined by Director of Athletics, Dick Christie. Welcome back to the show. Jen, thanks for having me. Well, since we um, revealed some of the highlights earlier on the show about the winter sports season, let's dive into that. Beginning with the men's basketball team, UNC Pembroke played host to the 2015 Peach Belt Conference Championships this past weekend, and the event um, looked like it's come and gone, just as simple as that. But what goes into planning an event like that on such short notice, and how valuable is the exposure that event brought to UNCP and the Pembroke community? Well, starting with that, it's invaluable. I mean, the, the community support that we were able to rally despite it being spring break was tremendous. I think we got a lot of first time visitors to the Jones Center that saw what kind of an atmosphere uh, we can create there. Uh, you know, leading the league in attendance this year, I think we had a, a really good diehard group of, of basketball fans. But anytime you have a postseason opportunity like that, we really get some new touch points and a chance to get some people that may come into the fold for, for next year. Um, as far as tournament management, uh, our staff did a fantastic job. Uh, you know, it's all about attention to detail, and uh, everybody was just on high alert for, for that six days that we had to, to get ready for teams to come in, and every piece of feedback that we received was positive. So um, it's always good to see that, and it's a chance to kind of put your institution and your, uh, you know, your brand on display, and we got a lot of good feedback. Well, the men's basketball team learned late Sunday night that it will make its third trip to the NCAA tournament in the last five years um, this weekend in Tennessee. What have been some of the highlights for you as a director of athletics this season? Well, first of all, got to give tons of credit to Coach Miller and his staff. Uh, you know, really, really uh, capitalized on the things that the team learned last year. Three trips and I think six seasons to the postseason is tremendous. Um, so really kudos goes out to what he's been able to build here. Uh, and, you know, that it's easy to sell a winner. So, uh, you know, the attendance and the, the marketing of those pieces kind of kind of come along uh, because of their success. So we're really fortunate for that. This year we've been we've had some teams really outperforming uh, their resources, which has been fantastic to see. Um, you know, obviously softball off to a, one of their better starts in, in a number of years and having three teams right now in the top 15 in the country uh, is, is always something to be proud of. So uh, seeing, seeing things trending towards the spring in a positive way and seeing all the, uh, the accolades for, for those teams, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, it's been a busy couple of weeks on campus. Uh, just two weeks ago, UNCP played host to the 2015 NCAA Midwest Wrestling Super Regional um, in the English E. Jones Center. More than 130 wrestlers and 14 teams competed at the event. What are some of the challenges in hosting an NCAA event, and how do you feel that it, it went? Uh, again, you know, had more teams here, uh, eight for the Peach Bell Tournament, 14 for, for wrestling. Um, but... Uh, Wrestling kind of once you get it started, it, it kind of run, runs itself with all the individual matches, but great feedback. You know, our, uh, our wrestling staff and our student athletes, they just have a, uh, such a hard-nosed hard work ethic, uh, you know, both on and off the mat. So they did so much on the operations side to really make that, that tournament go. And then yourself and a lot of our senior staff um, really, really put in a lot of time to, to make that a success. NCAA is pretty prescriptive in what they expect in their championships. You know, I was fortunate enough uh, over the years to work on a number of them. And uh, we, did, uh, we did everything to the dot in the I's and, and crossing the T's. So uh, it was, it was a, a great event for us. And to have two of those back to back, you know, in successive weekends is, is pretty special. Well, we haven't gotten a chance to talk to you about this yet, but the football team inked a scheduling agreement with the South Atlantic Conference in mid-January. Can you talk about that contract and what it means for the Braves? Yeah, um, huge partnership for us. Obviously, uh, the South Atlantic Conference has some of our best geographic rivals, uh, you know, with Wingate and Catawba and Newberry, um, and there's, there's nine schools within 250 miles of us. So from a, from a travel perspective, from a developing in-state rivalries, you really could not have have asked for a better fit. We're we're hoping that you know we can be good stewards of that opportunity, and that uh, you know it'll be a long-term partnership with the South Atlantic Conference. But tons of credit goes to to their commissioner Pat Britz, just a great leader and uh, visionary, and you know saw uh, saw the benefit in it. And you know Chancellor Carter was willing to really put in some hours to 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 try and garner support for for that partnership. So helps us to contain some costs over the next six years. And as we get a chance to build our brand and, and uh, develop those rivalries, it'll be a really, really good fit for football and a great recruiting tool. 
<laughs> well, speaking of football, UNCP will kick off spring football practice this week as well. Talk about what you're expecting from the football team during the spring, and can you tell us when the annual spring game will take place at Grace P. Johnson Stadium? Yeah, uh, a little twist this year. We're going back to a, a Thursday night for spring football. Uh, it'll be a nice symmetry with our first game of the year against Winston-Salem State on a, on a Thursday night again. So we're hoping for some great student support. And uh, we're going to do some things to, to get the fans engaged and try and, try and get a nice crowd out there uh, this spring. But uh, great recruiting class. You know, they've, they've got their entire staff in place now. We had uh, three new staffers come on this spring. And in short, short order, they, they did a great job in the recruiting process. So 22-person recruiting class, a couple of junior college kids, uh, nice nucleus, a young offensive lineman, uh, which, was, which was a need we were looking for. So really excited for Coach Richardson. And I know that uh, he's happy to kind of have some stability moving forward and be able to, uh, to hit the ground running. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Jen. And we'll speak to you towards the end of the season. Thank you for watching this week's edition of the Black and Gold Report. Until next week, go Braves.